uh, with an assigned sutta from the Sutta Nipata. That is our theme in the discussion. But at the beginning, we are opening the discussion for any other topic, any other suggestion, any other comments, or any other interview reports. And once that is finished, we are going to go to the traditional uh, book. So I cordially invite, if you have anything to report before going to the uh, our traditional standard uh, book, please come out. Avasarai Bante, we have two reports. Uh, with your permission, i like to present them. Yes, please. This report is uh, from Hasini. Uh, dear Bante, uh, I, am twin, I am 14 years old and have been practicing for three years. This is my experience. Please advise me. Recently, I have been going into my meditation ex expecting to go into a state of nothingness and was unable to do so because of such expectations. I was told by Bante to have an appointment with the disappointment. This time when I became disappointed because of not being able to enter the state of nothingness, I focus on the disappointment instead. As I watch it, as I watch it more, I was able to detach myself uh, from it. And once I had no more attachment to it, the feeling was not overwhelming, but instead it was nothing. By focusing on the disappointment, I entered a state of nothingness. Terwan Saranai, Hasini. That's the end of the report, Bhante. So whatever may be, whether you go with appointment or disappointment, you will end up with nothingness. So therefore, whenever the appointment happens, think that, know that I am going to go with that, with that preconceived idea. Sometimes even that can be successful, no harm. But sometimes it is not. That means disappointments. So if you can have an appointment with disappointment, the disappointment also not a mishap. It's another, another an alternative. So you are 14 years old. So just for the namesake, understand the appointment with the disappointment. This is what I read in my 28th year at the Peradini University. I was so happy because my life is full of disappointments. So now I am happy to have their disappointment. So that day onward, I am... A, Appointed person, everything is a success. But each time I get disappointed, I remember the uh, who I'm poor, I think. The author, he says, the life is utter disappointment. So if you can have an appointment with disappointments, you are always living. You are not dreaming. You are not uh, premeditated. Facing the life. So present day education is killing. It's always with, a, with that appointment. So that means you have already leased out your life to the educationists. So ultimately we will end up with disappointments. Even if you are success in the education, ultimately many are in frustration because they do not know how to handle this frustration and disappointments. Because education is assuring you no frustration, no disappointment. If you are getting this exam passed, you will be the king and you will be the everything. But ultimately, you will be just a slave. Instead, have an appointment with the disappointment. You have written your essay very efficiently. And giving your example, enlightening for others. Thank you. We are going to the next report. Dear Bante, uh, I am 17 year old and last time I did line down meditation and you told me to do sitting meditation instead. So here's my experience. Please advise me. Sitting meditation. I sat down comfortably and closed my eyes and instantly I, I instantly became aware of the thoughts flooding my mind. I usually feel strong attraction to my thoughts. However, this time the attraction seemed to be muted. I noticed that my attraction was still there, but it wasn't as consuming as it usually was. I focused on the feeling of the thoughts rampaging through my head instead of getting involved with each thought. My head felt crowded, but it wasn't, it wasn't overwhelming or tiring. At times, my attention de deviated to my breath, but then it soon came back to the feeling of overflow, overflowing thoughts. Terwan Sarnai, Onaya. That's the end of the report, Bhante. So now you know 
whether you lie down or whether you are sitting, the mind is the mind. So therefore, if you consider lying down is more comfortable and more prone to wrong ideas, thinking and frustration and kind of thing, you will have a guilt. I am not meditating, I am lying down. But if you are, when you are sitting, it appears like that you are ready for the game and doing. And therefore, there is a kind of a hilarious idea. I am not appreciating it much, but uh, you will not have a guilt thinking that I am lying down. So therefore, whether you are lying down or whether you sit, mind is exactly the same. The posture is uh, just uh, outside paint. So you can try the Buddha recommended four cardinal postures, sitting, standing, walking and lying down. But generally for the beginners, the Buddha says sitting and walking is advisable, but lying down and standing, not recommended. But as you continue, they also come into your day-to-day life. Ultimately, you can make use of it. Why not uh, have a contemplation before going to sleep while you are lying down? And while you are standing for waiting for a bus queue, while waiting, why don't why can't you have? So but make use the opportunity, but whenever you have formal meditation, we give sitting and sorry, walking and sitting. But others are not crimes. But our mind has some values, thinking lying down is sleepy man job. Sitting is somewhat energetic. Walking is some more energizing. And standing Usually conventional people do not accept it. But uh, later you can do it. So therefore I am happy that you have given a try. And it was a success. And uh, uh, now again you can try with that success. What is your lying down meditation? Please continue. Thank you, Bhante. That's the end of the report, Bhante. Thank you. So we have taken about 10 minutes or so. Yes. Can I comment on the sleeping meditation or the lying down meditation? Oh, so you, are, you can yeah. hear when Buddha Rakiti is going to sleep. I'll teach you how to sleep. Uh, I, I'd li- like to maybe just adjust what you... Uh, or, or give my input on, on, on this lying down meditation. Um, uh, like, uh, I find uh, that if you want to cultivate it as a practice, then uh, be careful not to maybe not use it uh, before you go to sleep. I mean, you can use lying down, obviously, as a posture going into sleep. And it's very good to be mindful uh, as you go into sleep and actually as you come out of sleep in the morning. So in that case, you may be in the lying down posture. Um, but uh, it can also, if if you want to cultivate lying down as a posture, then um, uh, you can get into a bad habit if you only use it going to sleep. Uh, basically, you'll have the habit of lying down and going to sleep meditation rather than actually lying down meditation. Yeah, so um, if you're tired, for instance, you know, you've been running around and you need to rest, uh, or if you're feeling sick or ill or something like that, or maybe uh, a little drowsy after a meal or something like that, then that can be a time to actually, um, rather than being excessively energetic and, say, doing walking meditation or something like that, um, you can actually use the lying down posture then and uh, try not actually to go to sleep, um, but uh, to, you know, understand that the lying down posture is a very calm posture. It's a very relaxed posture and um, it's a more subtle meditation than the sitting posture the sitting posture has a very nice balance between uh, effort to sit up and so on Uh, whereas the lying down um, it's easier to park the body and put it aside but uh, nevertheless lying down is actually an extremely useful posture for instance if you're sick if you're not well um, and you know if you only have the habit of sitting or walking um, then you can fail to uh, practice uh, when when sick or ill or uh, tired or something like that or one can be overexerting and trying too hard uh, to, we'll say, sit up or do walking meditation when the more appropriate uh, posture would be uh, standing or lying down. 
again, I, I've done a lot of standing meditation because I had injuries. So again, it depends on your uh, physical uh, situation, but standing is a very, very us useful option. And if you are standing, then uh, it's very useful to stand in a corner so that you have two supporting walls. And you can um, you can kind of lean against the, the, the corners or the walls until you become more and more experienced in the standing posture. And I, again, a good reason to have standing posture in your back pocket as a technique is um, we're often standing, uh, standing, waiting for an elevator, standing, waiting for somebody standing, holding a phone or whatever you're doing. And in that time, again, is an opportunity to practice. And if you don't have the preparation of having you know, formally practice these techniques, then you're not ready for the informal opportunities that life give you. So I, again, for me in my life now as a monk, sitting, standing, walking, lying down are all developed practices for me from the, the formal practice in the in the Dhamma Hall so that they're available to me in, in any life opportunity. So if I'm at the airport or if I'm you know, somewhere in life, wherever life brings me, um, it, there's a continuous practice going on. Yeah, so the, <clears throat> I had a close relationship with Pauk Sado, and he's a great Samatha master. He's utterly burnt up with the, um, how do you call, uh, heartburn? The stomach, huh? Reflux. Reflux, and he's, whatever he's eating, torturing him. So sometimes it uh, uh, lying down and turning around in order to just to ma maintain the situation. And he says, I am recommending people to sit and meditate. But often what I do is lie down because otherwise brain hardly get any um, oxygen. Because the um, stomach is burning so much. And well, usually I am not recommending it. But lying down, okay. So therefore you have done lying down. I, I recommend you to go to the sit. And now you are reporting about the sitting. So again, go to lie down and see with the sitting experience. Now you are lying down, will be more awake, not sleepy, more awake and body is resting. Mind is not so. So if you put a brainwave starter or EEG, very difficult to understand when the meditation increases, the mind activity is increasing or decreasing. Some activities are decreasing, corporeal and bodily, but the mind becomes very agile, very diligent, very vigilant. So theta waves, uh, two behaviors, something is activated and they are, how do you call, sparking, very alert, very vigilant, very diligent. Other part is calming down. So therefore, Wikipedia idea about the brain waves and the meditator's idea about the brain waves, Samatha Yogi's idea about the brain waves, Vipassana Yogi's idea of the brain waves, not concluded yet. So we did the best in Sri Lanka in the world, 20 meditating monks put into EEG machine and then read the, this thing published in the medical journal and we are going to proceed along which are to Try and see the way, what is your perspective, with what angle you are looking at. So all the postures are okay. Sometimes while sitting, you feel sleepy. While walking, you feel sleepy. Sometimes while sitting, you park your body. Sometimes while walking, still you can just park the body and just observe, how am I walking? So it is almost resembling the sitting, uh, the lying down posture. So therefore, these are, these are the exercises for the senior meditators under a noble quest. Okay, thank you, Ari. We are now going to go to the book. Any any other thing if you have? No. So we will invite Venerable Dhamma uh, Buddha Rakita to present the today's topic, please. So <clears throat> we've been analyzing the uh, Pasura Sutta in the uh, Sutta Nipada chapter of eight and we've already gone through the first four uh, verses so i'd like to start reading the fifth verse and this is a translation by bhikkhu bodhi these disputes have arisen among ascetics in relation to them to them one becomes elated or dejected having seen this too one should uh, one should desist from arguments for there is no other benefit than praise or gain. 
Again, if I, if I look at uh, Sadatissa's uh, translation of the same verse, these disputes, ha um, these, uh, disputes arise among recluses, and as a result of them, there is elation and depression. Seeing this, avoid disputation. There is no value in it other than the praise won thereby. So uh, again, um, the Buddha is trying to get down to the core of why these people dispute. And uh, there's a sense of victory, there's a sense of uh, praise, that uh, there's a sense of gain. So there's different kinds of wealth in the world, like uh, there's the wealth of money, and then there's the, the wealth of fame and praise and gain. So uh, we, we need to understand the, uh, the different powers as such that drive people in the world. And uh, so the power that is especially driving these people who are prone to dispute, uh, prone to public debate, is that they uh, they want praise and they want gain, and their way the argumentation is just a, a means for them to achieve this goal of praise and gain, and uh, sort of superiority over others or competitiveness, a uh, victory over others, and uh, one can see that they are related or on the other side, dejected. So uh, again, in, in mental health, elation and dejection can become something like bipolar. So uh, we should understand that that uh, mental health is uh, can be just an imbalance of the norms that are going on. So if, if one is... Uh, a, uh, one can often see it um, sometimes in professional sports people and so on that um, after, say, winning a gold medal, they become, say, chronically depressed. So they, they, they are people who are, uh, say, prone to an imbalance in their mental states or can actually, in a weird way, be driven by their imbalance. And, um, and the same with uh, other, other fields. Like if you, if you find out the private or personal lives of some of the famous uh, stars, pop stars or comedians or something like that, there can be tremendous depression lurking in the background. So that um, on the one hand, they're on stage and they want the praise and the gain. And then behind the curtains, they're um, kind of d depressed or anxious people. And um, uh, a friend of mine actually works in the, the BBC in England. And, and she was telling me about uh, a very famous um, TV presenter and uh, that she works with and said, like, you know, you, you wouldn't believe what he's like off camera. You know, he's he's very reserved, very private, very quiet, um, whereas on camera, he's like very explosive and, you know, charismatic and so on. So uh, in, in, the, in, in Buddhism, we recommend the middle way and um, bringing one's life in line with uh, how one lives so that there isn't a big sort of swing between the the, the public and the private or, um, you know, one of the meanings of Arahant is uh, uh, a person who doesn't, has nothing to hide. Arahat means nothing to hide. And uh, that's, that's really important. It's, it's, it's a beautiful quality that uh, one's life is, is pure, clear and authentic. And, um, and then that we're not driven by such strong motives as that we need praise and gain like these are very external um, qualities and subject to the conditionality of the world. Um, if I'm depending on other people to praise me for my own happiness, then, you know, what happens if people don't praise me? What happens if there is nobody around me? Well, obviously I'm defeated and I, I feel depressed. I feel disappointed. Whereas if I'm just internally happy, whether people are criticizing me or praising me, it, it really doesn't change anything. So I become like the ocean where, you know, maybe there's some surface waves, but the, the great depth of the ocean is, is still and, and not, and not uh, uh, subject to vicissitude. It's not going up and down. But anyway, maybe we can uh, listen to what Venerable Dhammajiva has to say and hear what he has so to say I from just the Sinhalese the and Pali point Pali of view. Pali version, Ete vivada samane su jata, Ete su ughati nighati hoti, Evampi disa virame tato jang, tato jang, ne hanya datiti pasansa labha. The singular translation, uh, this debate based uh, mendicants. Uh, the commentary is non-Buddhist mendicants. 
that is the way as always says protecting the buddhist people as good non buddhist uh, with debateful and argumenting uh, arising among the uh, how to call non buddhist or heretics heretics arising that is a basic we among the heretics debates arise argumenting arises in this uh, debate uh, accumulation of the fame or reduction of the fame gain and other thing can happen bipolar sometimes they are phrased or sometimes they are uh, damaged or reputation is damaged anugraha nigraha dakkai knowing that disadvantage don't engage in debates don't entertain debates and uh, argument it because uh, in the argue, in the debate only you get the fame and gain there is nothing else there's no truth in other words so knowing that disadvantage don't engage don't start don't uh, entertain debating uh, only the gain is very minimus the fame the praise instead you may get the ill name ill fame and kind of thing knowing that is a limited don't get enc- encourage and if you go to the chanki sutta in majjhima nikaya i think 95 buddha says to verify something there are five methods whether he is a good man or bad man whether his discussion is good or bad whatever may be if you wish to verify five methods he says ark um, uh, sadha ruchi anusava aakar parivitak dithini jana kanti one thing is faith i i believe he is good finished so that's the way i verify um, sadha sadha i think you know the you have heard the term sadha have you heard sadha yeah ruchi that's my desire that's my selection my choice so once it is gone whether it is verified good or bad never mind that's my choice you need have our pop, pop music uh, musician dancers and singers that my choice i don't like uh, criticizing it uh, that's good and ruchi ditini aakar parvita na anusava that is the way my teacher is telling that is the way holy book is telling don't argue holy book holy ghost or holy teacher and the other one is aakar parvita debating by debating the winning part is good winning part is correct and the last one is your view so buddha the the other person the, the discussing with buddha is very young person utterly thorough in hinduistic and brahmanic this thing and is a well reputed person but the youngest so 16 years old and he uh, going to talk with him while elders are talking buddha says you young guy just wait till we finished i will give you a chance later like and is reprimanding and the elderly people say is bandhi i am sorry that he is a very learned person then buddha says never mind that we are talking why are you interrupting and after that buddha give a hint then he says bandhi i am a young person i am doing the hinduistic uh, religious life full of faith but i i know you as an alternative so i am doing with my whole heart what do you say about my faith what do you say about my sacrification <coughs> buddha says uh, faith is a good one people many going for but there's a uh, two <coughs> disadvantages one thing is within the area of faith truth may not be available what is the the, the what is who rejected as not faithful truth may be this uh, in this very life you can verify what you selected as faith may no absence of the truth but to rejected as a heretic may carry the truth then he says not only one thing that the only due to the faith the way i like way i do my life the ascetic life i like it i am very frugal kind of person then the buddha says just like the faith your wish your your selection your choice may carry the truth within your choice or oh, what you rejected as i don't like maybe it is having the truth exactly you can verify then he about to say 
I am not only bante my faith, not only I do willfully, third thing is my scriptures are telling the same. Books. Then the Buddha says, I will tell you, there are five criterions. You mentioned the faith, you mentioned the will or wish, and now you are mentioning about the book, holy book. And other thing is Akara Parvitaka, the debate that we are our topic today. And the other thing is Diti. All five have the same character. Within that range, the truth may be or may not be. What you rejected as not your faith, not your will, wish, not your holy book, not your argumenting and winning and your this thing, view, truth can be. Then he is confused. Then Bhante, Bhante, you are rejecting everything. How can you proceed? Then Buddha says, you 17 stages. Sadda, Jato, Upasangamati, Upasangamanto, Pairupati, all the five put it in a serial order. One verified by the other. Faith verified by your wish. Wit verified by your holy book. That is verified by your argumenting. And that is verified by the view. And again, come back to the faith. It's a wonderful presentation. And... Uh, Present day education is utterly blind. They are telling this is the truth. Definitely it leads the world to the warming, global warming. It is leading to the pollution. And we are telling it is the truth. No one can verify. Very not verifiable. The, the faith it is unverifiable, your choice which is unverifiable, and your holy book which is unverifiable. And your argumenting and unverifiable, this is disproving it. And your view that is unverifiable is sending you mad, sending you reptilian, you are sending you animal. You are not human. So ultimately that person understand, which is all the elders. Elders usually have the respect to the Buddha. They already came to the Buddha. But this young man asked the present day most dynamic questions from the Buddha. Chanki Sutta. And they are argumenting. Usually I am a person ready for arguments. I am happy. But I never initiate arguments. <coughs> no. If someone come, I never go back. I tit to tat. I give the retaliation. But says, you started, please, don't put me in trouble. I am a person, I am happy to live in my room. But if you come and ask, definitely I am ready because I am a monk. I am eating from the others. I am sleeping in the others' places. Everything is given by others. So if someone come and give and give a fight or give argument or give a challenge, it's my duty. I may be win or not. I don't mind. <clears throat> but I am ready. But I know that will never lead to the truth or well-being, simple well-being. Present day arguments are utterly using for missionary work. It's a crime. It's a crime. Human beings are doing crime. The each and every one is independent individuals. I mean, contented person. Why should we have a missionary, missionaries to us to teach? But we are, of course, by talking, we are influencing others. I know it. But some people are fully armed with that missionary work. They are coming with debates. Dalai Lama, his holiness is they, to get the Lama, Dalai Lama become Dalai Lama, 17 years they must learn how to argue. Sometimes kicking each other. They, they, they know each and every question you can raise. Each and every raised question they have a standard answer. So when you are preparing, I am armed with, I know. So he says there's no use it because we have we know it, but we are not mindful maybe. We not be simply here and now. We may be very vehemently arguing and fighting and warming up and all that and the audience will be very happy. But end up with these two things, either fame or ill fame. Nor in that shallowness of the argument, please go behind beyond. That is, uh, the, you must know the, know the disadvantage. So this sutta, you may give a little, little uh, about the, the historical background. Uh, the, the Pasura name came from that one. And that is the way the Buddha gave such a very lasting kind of answer. Would you mind to give the reminder, uh, the base, the Nidana? 
so, uh, Pasura was a, a debater at the time of the the Buddha, and uh, he he became quite famous. So he was uh, attracted to Sawati, and uh, he uh, challenged Venerable Sariputta to a debate, and and Venerable Sariputta defeated him in that. Um, debate so uh, again this this person in defeat he decided that he would go and actually directly challenge the monks in the monastery and uh, so when um, when the buddha heard about uh, about this uh, argument or debate between uh, pasura and and the venerable uh, sariputta then he 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 gave this teaching about the you know the causation, the the reasoning, the the the, the why people go into debate, and um, you can see that even after two and a half thousand years, that uh, nothing's mo- nothing much has changed, and um, uh, all the points that uh, Venerable Damajiva has said this morning, I, I I agree with, and but I, I would I would remind people again, we mentioned it the last few times, is that uh, it's entertainment, so uh, a lot of the time. Um, that that people have throughout history been engaged in debates apart from just this fame and gain and so on is that it's actually entertainment like why do the audience watch and participate um, sometimes yes they want to be persuaded or they want to learn or um, they want to uh, see somebody win and somebody lose it's like um you know it's like a non-contact uh, combat that's going on it's a form of combat in a way it's a fight in a way but uh, ultimately, it's entertaining, and uh, to this day, um, you know these these kinds of things have become entertainment. And um, as I mentioned previously, um, that um, even Rupert Murdoch had to kind of answer his shareholders by saying that he wasn't running a news organization; he was running an entertainment organization. And and you should understand and and um, see the difference. That a, that a discerning person would realize that it was entertainment, it wasn't news. So these days, um, the media and so forth have taken on, um, have dropped the, um, the goal or the mission of in, uh, informing people about the world or conditions or, you know, giving information. And they've, they've, ma- they've, they've gone into entertainment and um so we we as as wiser people should understand uh the the the, the fair the, the the type of food that we're being fed we, are we being fed in news and inf- entertain our information or our entertainment and if we're getting agitated and disturbed then that's a good hint that it's entertainment and you might think well agitation is not uh the bait of entertainment but uh, again if you go to horror movies or to action films and so on you can see how the mind is very attracted to to uh, this kind of agitation as a form of entertainment so uh, you can see your own feelings if you have uh, good chitta nupasana veda nupasana when you're watching uh, these entertaining debaters uh, how you're being persuaded to follow them in one side or the other side or whatever camp you're in and their camp and so on. And this is a very ancient battle that people have been carrying out for millennia. And this is human nature. So it's it's a, a very important and relevant sutta to the present time. You know that uh, entertainment-wise or debate-wise, uh, if you give the... the uh, give the win, winning to the other parties... You can just be telling, yes, 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 you are correct. And uh, that would be like uh, Anyanupiksha, that's uh, not facing each other. But if you can go and f- confront with the debater, and you must be much smart, you can, uh, how do you call, uh, I don't know, I can't remember the number, you can be more, much more smarter, and then you can win by not, not doing something. Your art is not doing something, you're not even starting a debate. You know, debate is to agitate someone. But you know the art of calming down. After the agitation, after the debate with the debater, you must calm down him. That is the way the Buddha conquered the world. He can he can go beyond his argument, cover from that side and this side the silence. And with that he crashed the fellow. You can argue with me, but I am much smart. I can outsmart you. Am I correct? 
I can outsmart you by the argumenting, but that is not the tactic. That is to just to break your, take your the, uh, venoms. The, um, how do you call the teeth? Fangs. Fangs out. And then my fight is to calm down him. Telling that calm down person, you can't win. By arguing person, <laughs> I can take your fans. Because I am outsmart you. But that is not the game. The Purusadamma Sarati, one of the famous uh, name, epithet for the Buddha, Purusadamma Sarati, any, any rugged people come, but the Buddha, Buddha can that, outsmart them. But never end up with that. Calm it down and say, hey darling, the argument is a sickness in the mind. Argumenting is a cancer in your mind. And I can understand. But I can outsmart you. But the answer is not by argumenting, but by calming down, I can give you till, I can tell you, please sit down and see that just, just doing nothing. Just summairi in Tamil and says, just be. You're fighting with your arguing mind. You are, you are fighting now. But you are fighting with other person. If the Buddha is the other person, your fangs will be removed. <laughs> and then ask, calm down. When was Hariputta also the same. But usually these people, Buddha and Sariputta, never start an argument. They are not initiating it. But really. Therefore, the Buddhism is a, uh, is a teaching. You can definitely argue. No problem. You never start. You can definitely, you must learn how to outsmart and you, the best thing is the Milinda Panya and King Miranda come and ask all possible questions. Well, the, the, that, the, who is the monk? I can't remember the name. He give them smart answers. Each and every, ultimately he accepts. But this monk is usually sitting down and close to eyes and hand upon the hand and he's meditating. But the any debater, they are entertaining type. The monks are not entertaining type. They say they know the secret of how to calm down. They know the secret of how to settle down. They know the secret of how to do nothing. And no one can win it. Therefore, if you do not know how to sit down, do you do not know how to calm down, don't go for argument. Definitely your fangs will be removed. So even if your fangs are removed and even if you are ready to accept this calming down, the teaching of the Buddha and Sariputta, both the parties are winning. So that is why the Sutta came into the book, talking about the argumenting, but it is not winning by argumenting, telling argumenting is vanity, useless. But that is the one way of dopamine homes happening in your mind and people are happy. That is why, as he mentioned, when the people are argumenting, a lot of audience to look. How, how is the change? Because it must be undecided. It must be not premeditated. Then people are entertained. But the people in the stage are sweating. Don't sweat small stuff. Why are you argumenting and going for sweating for this small stuff? Ultimately, the whole world, the whole life is a small stuff. What is to argue? But take the argument inside, say, how long I can be? Be nothing, doing nothing, be with the beginner's mind. Then you can see argumenting is a cancer. It's torturing you. That is what wrath coming out, you argue with any person coming. Because you can't, you don't know the art of being quiet, art of being doing nothing. If you know it, you can use this as a missionary work. Any argument person, you can come. I know how to take, how to take your fangs out. And not only that, on top of that, I can teach you how to be calmed down, how to just walk on the earth, how to sit down and wait. So that is the biggest argument in the world. That's going against the evolution. And that is the point where we are outsmarting the pro slow process of evolution. It's a very fast movement. Quick S-shaped curve going, gathering the momentum. And you are, understand people do without knowing their inner argument, inner split and inner conflict. They are arguing with other outside. Endless. It is endless. Any idea, you, you newcomers? 
it is indeed an ad advantage goal not to get into that competitive um, moment in the discussion because by by evolution we are always in kind of defensive uh, mind and I think the most important thing is to catch up that discussion first in your mind. It is like, like bouncing and giving back a feeling of compassion. And this uh, silence to feel inside is um, something by what you can, uh, from your inner, can grow. Um, it is a very, very difficult practice as we are all trained to be competitive from school on to defend our position to have to want yeah to defend mm, when you are really in a talk show and you answer with silence and it is the most important thing what i heard out of what you were saying uh, dear venerable the kind of smart answers It is to let the audience listen to that silence in that moment and you may even just laugh like the Dalai Lama or you give a joke in return. This is for me the smart answer. And I hope I, I got it so far with my words. I reflected yours. It wasn't my intention really to talk, but that I got the point, I hope, a bit. Yeah. Okay. So, so we are not arguing. We are not debating. We are we are asking to you to express your view. Yeah. I reflected. Yeah. We are not arguing, and we are not giving the silence answer for the moment. We are put into words, but appreciating the silence is the ultimate absolute answer. But now we are learning because it's the one fifth of our today education, and they, everyone has taken the weapon in the wrong side. The weapon in the wrong side. And the you are tackling the serpent in the wrong place. It is very venomous. And the present day, younger generation, they don't know what they are arguing for. Their teachers do not know where to lead them. They are just agitating them. Just like the electron collider. Bursting. Mm. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know how to calm down. And then they are, they are happy with uh, teachers than parents because parents are calming down, teachers are agitating them and ultimately what, what you learn from the teachers, you, you try with your parents, hit the parents, argue with the parents. But people are very compassionate and they are, so ultimately child find no go, they back, go back and fight with the teacher later. Now the teachers and students are full of frustration. Full of tension. 86% teachers in the Sri Lanka in tension and frustration. Imagine how can they teach? America, I heard, 73%. And Sri Lanka, this is 86%. After the higher training, or say so, training colleges, or degree, after three years they re resign. What is this fight? They are agitating. They don't know they are teaching is with the hidden curriculum. They are not <laughs> worried about the curriculum. The hidden curriculum is much, much larger than the curriculum. End up with frustration. And mindfulness is to calm down. Not always, but if someone is coming with argumenting, you are ready. You can give the counter argument. You can give the, the you can outsmart him. But you know, whenever there is no, you know how to calm down. As he mentioned, the upper layer of the ocean is always with the waves. But you go to the deep down, always calm. So which one you are associating? The superficial, the, the surface or the mid-ocean? Lower down motion also agitated sometimes due to the whales and big uh, fishes. So upper and lower is, lower is agitated, middle is always calm. So in your mind also, if it is a globe, upper part is agitated because of the news media and beauty queens and all the kind of things. Lower most part also maybe, but if you can dwell in the center, <laughs> it's naturally calm. So if you go up there, fight. If you go down there, fight. 
the middle part you don't know you are born enlightened enlightenment is lying between but your mind is always associating extremes the buddha says don't worry about the extremes please come and take a rest darling at least 5 minutes a day it's not unfair but people say they don't have 5 minutes they are so happy with both the extremes so the irish girl uh, she wrote you are born to be free to learn this cross section and go and drill, drill in the middle not that you are fearful to go to the top top end with the frills and thrills and all the kind of you can go but your drill home you see the center human beings are all enlightened but they do not know because they find the truth and the calm down in the superficial at the top most it's lot of waves is a lot of action action packed and large screen and go go show and uh, how do you call popular films you have anything to tell from the swiss silence right now just processing a lot yeah so we can proceed sir. so the the next verse continues in this theme if however he is praised there having declared his doctrine in the midst of the assembly he is thrilled by this and swells with pride having obtained the benefit that accords with his wish so again uh, this idea of declaring one's doctrine in the midst of a, an assembly and uh, being thrilled by this and swelling with pride having obtained the benefit that accords with his wish so here you know we can see that a person wants to be seen as as, as smart or insightful or wise that they have a doctrine they have a, an idea or a belief or a teaching to share with others so we can see that um oh this is like uh here's information here's the news here's uh the great theory of understanding here's the great insight into the world and uh like one is uh, thrilled like oh i i'm so smart i'm so clever and and everybody's listening and uh swelling with pride and then uh having obtained this uh feedback from the audience um the, ac- according to one's wish you you've gotten positive feedback then uh one is just uh reinforced and uh in the next verse through his pride is the ground of distress he yet speaks from conceit and arrogance having seen sorry if sorry if yeah uh through his pride he is through his pride is the ground of distress he yet speaks from conceit and arrogance having seen through this too one should not dispute for the skilled say this does not bring purity so uh, again uh, you can point out that somebody is is being proud and um and if one has pride then one is uh, one is in danger of cracking because if somebody can just merely say you're puffed up or you're proud or show that you're actually just being uh, conceited or arrogant then um this is a weakness and this is a, an attack for a, a skilled debater you know to to destroy the uh person rather than the argument so uh having seen through this the uh skilled debater should not dispute with a person for the skilled to say that this does not bring purity the skilled here in this case is referring to the wise person or a wise debater rather than a, a one who would be skilled at um attacking uh, the weak point because uh you know this goes back to what uh, venerable damajiva was saying le- earlier about how the buddha could uh could win a a a debate but yet not not destroy the uh, opponent because in the in this destruction of the uh, opponent of humiliating a person um then uh there's a, an impurity to be found uh, a lack of humility uh, in victory so uh what what's really interesting here i think is the emotional battlefield 
the psychological battlefield that um, that the Buddha is referring to here. Uh, like he doesn't need to give examples here of the different kinds of arguments or disputes, but it's it's all the internal um, battlefield of the mind that he's talking about, and uh, in this way, it's a very very profound sutta. Um, many other. Um, uh, expositions or treaties on uh, like people will pick out the, the facts that that will uh, illuminate their argument or they'll pick out the facts or the um, the angles of the doctrines that will be the weak point in somebody else's argument and if you ever go into professional debating this is the um, uh, these are the tactics and strategies that the debaters will use but rarely do you see this kind of underlining you know, strategy of the emotional battlefield of dealing with arrogance and conceit, how proud, how pride is the ground for distress. So even seeing that, say, a successful politician has presented their argument well and everybody's supportive is in fact the the seed of their downfall, the seed of their destruction. And uh, at the same time, the Buddha recommends to us haven't seen this weak point that we should um, we should not try to destroy the opponent you know we should try and defang them of their argument but not destroy them so there's a great humility and a great reserve and this is a hallmark of mastery and of um, management over the other person in the debate because one has management over oneself so in that way, uh, it's a very deep level of understanding of debate itself. So recently, it happened me to read a commentary on the Madhyamakarika by Nagarjuna. I don't know whether you have heard about it. It's the most famous book on debates and the logics. And he's a Mahaya. He's the beginning of the Mahayana tradition. He wrote the Mula Madhyama Karika. And his famous disciples now accept he's a failure. Because the disciple says, you can win an argument by two ways. One thing is, as he mentioned, pointing out the weaknesses in the argument. What you first told was wrong with the latter part, what you are telling. So you can really indicate that you are in the talk. This is the, what your basic tenets, tenets, and at the beginning you are disproving it. So, argument is wrong. That's uh, Sandarbha or something like that's a name. Another one, you can give a count argument, you are uh, the prophecy. Still, that you, so that's what you are going to argue. But I have another one, it's a more prolific, it's a more uh, gainful. So, you can give an alternative. So, Nagarjuna part is to find the fault with the other argument. He never gave up, give his own view. Because he highlighted the Buddha. He is not giving something new. He said what the Buddha says. But what you are going to tell, what is your line of thinking is wrong because this is contradicting with that. So he has not his own view presented. So you can see an argument when we are talking to each other, when you are debating, I can find his faults because he is contradicted. Grammar is wrong. Presentation is wrong. Early parts is contradictory. So he will be defeated. Or otherwise I can say what you are going to prove is this. But I have another profession. I have a profess. I have something to tell you more. So sometimes he may accept. So we being Buddhist monks, we have nothing to tell new. Everything we are learning from the Buddha, we Buddha learned from the previous Buddha, nothing, it is a discovery, means it is not an innovation. No, 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 no creativity. Creativity is the creator God. The Buddha is completely against. So therefore, whenever someone is going to say, Buddha is a creator, what a mess. In 1978, there was a famous book. He got the world, world Sri Lankan best book. He says, Buddha has a creator. Wonderful writing. Concept is wrong. Buddha is a creator. Yeah. He is not a creator. He is just telling what the early Buddha told. And we are not creators. We are just telling what the Buddha told. 
So therefore, in that perspective, I can see what you tell earlier is now wrong. This is this is what this is the grammar. This blah blah blah. blah. Then I can defeat you. But instead, I can tell. No, no, world is created by God and God is everything and your argument is wrong. Then you're asking for, you are taking a stand. You are taking a new concept. And present day education is utterly creative. So this is the creating, uh, the, the how do you call, mana? Conceit? Utterly conceited. The present day science you see, everyone proved today, six months' time it is disproved. Otherwise, it is not a science. With nothing to prove in this world, because Buddha has mentioned everything, what the scientists are doing, what the Nobel Prizes are earning, they are talking on a trivial thing. Next day, other person will tell, you are wrong. I mean, it's a good dynamic, it is a dialectic, it's good, okay. But it is nothing to tell. We have to just to liberate from this earth from this sansara, rather than creating something, a progeny or thesis or scriptures on the rocks, nothing. So this is very difficult to convince into the present day education heads. They are talking, Bhante, you must be creative. You must be productive. Then I told, I am not married. I have no children. I am not productive. <laughs> I have nothing to create. You have created enough problems. Don't do it. Simply. Finished. Rather than having an alternative answer, don't do it. They consider this as an insult. They consider this as an insult to the education. They want to have creativity. They want to have productivity. So we have nothing to tell new. We are talking the same thing the Buddha told. It's an everlasting truth. Nahi vere na vera ni sammanti to kudajanang avere ni sammanti esa dhammo thanantanu. Don't hate the hateful people. It will never end. The peace. It's an it's eternal Dhamma. It is not a created one. And these all eternal Dhamma in a Pasi, in the Saratustra, Soroastris education, and in the Upanishad, and in the early Quran, early Testament, Old Testament, not the New Testament, this is corrupted. And the holy scripts, they are talking exactly the same. That is what the Gurdjie was totally take, talking. Everything is, they know the truth. But they wanted to be decorated, entertaining type. And uh, pharmaceuticals. And uh, how do you call, facelifting. Gloss over. The present day whole, every science, every mica, every business is gloss over. Hiding the truth. It cannot, it cannot last. It cannot last. We are human beings, we are innocent people, we have our innocent nature, whatever the outside uh, recognition. We are innocent beings. Why can't we sit and talk? We have no such discrimination, whatever the thing you are going to impose. There's no. So, human nature, when you be here and now, we all are the same. Have you practiced being here and now? Be mindful? So you are with Buddha. You are with Jesus. You are with Sarasusra. You are with Brahma. You are the healer. You are the beginning. You are the middle. You are the end. So you need no any education. Any education, be eccentric. You, you feel like being here and now is so simple. So honest, so straightforward, so we must have some kind of a twisting of the bending of the truth. That is what the entertaining is. We can't live because our mind needs dopamine. That is the bending the truth and all the decorations and how do you call, like I remember, the, what is the beautification? That is, any other word for beautification? Pharmaceutical industry? Cosmetics. Cosmetics. Everything is nothing but cosmetics. When, we, when I write, my writings are not so good for publishing. So I have to send always to another editor. She will do a cosmetics. And the, but the content is very good, but the presentation is no good. So I adjusted it. So let me have, then I will do whatever you like. I don't like, I don't want, I don't mind whether you published or not. This is what? The truth is not with the cosmetics. 
you just have to look at the uh, flower, look at the child, look at the young an animals. So beauty. But whenever they are growing, flowers are using to make cosmetics to the female's hair, put on the hairstyle. The flies are, flowers are crying. Let them be on the tree rather than on this, uh, the, the conceited uh, ladies have, having the shaking hair with the flowers. So therefore our natural nature, we are born to be free and we are in nature. So when we are sitting down on the earth and we are talking, when you are walking barefoot on the earth, what a kind of relaxation. No creative, nothing developing, but that is the creation, that is the... That is the thing you have to recreate. That is the thing you have to do away with cosmetics. So during the time of the Buddha, some other well-versed people wanted to have cosmetics put into the Buddha's teaching. He told, no, 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 no. Leave it as it is. Don't put into <laughs> anything. So this has some stanzas, some poems, some argumenting, some early stories, everything. Nine kind of teachings. So there is no only one pattern. So when you become education at the primary level, you know everything. When you grow and you become university, you are limited to one subject. MSc, PhD, lost everything. Permanent head damage, useless. Which you know everything about nothing. When you become PhD. But when you are the basic degree or undergraduates, you know everything. How to go to the field, how to go to the garden, how to go to the shop, and everything. But when you become a genius, become a useless, become just composed. So therefore you must know the middle. And even if you have learned, you must try to keep it away and just be human. So that is, that is considered as inability in the present world. But in that sense, a monk is a critical, radical reaction, reflection. When you see a monk, the lay people do not know how to behave with them. Because they are kind of a mendicant, they are mad fellows, or, or they are in asylum. <laughs> you know everything. Doing nothing, eating from the others, living in others' places, wearing what the others given. Medicine-wise, they are not much worried, and sometimes using their own urine. Finished. Just ask any corona specialist, is this way of life is wrong? They have no other alternative because this is the norm. This is the uh, beginner's mind. This is the, no argumenting, I mean, it is a, it's a kind of an argument, heated argument for the cosmetics. People with the pharmaceutical and cosmetics, we are giving a radical reflection. We are no cosmetics, but we are very beautiful. We are very attractive to the world, but we are not going there. We let everyone come and entertain. So therefore a monk is a kind of a radical reflection. But in this commentary case, the monks are arguing they are not Buddhist monks, they are heretic monks. There is no such a thing. Every monk is a mendicant. So you have to understand whatever you learn, don't be, be, uh, let it be a burden to the world burden to yourself, burden to your humanity, always you must ready to come back to here and now, present moment. And then you see all the questions rectified. The null and void. So therefore the book that I have a book, don't sweat the small stuff. And ultimately everything is a small stuff. You must know how to reduce into nothing and just be here. Thank you, Swam Thank you, Swami Nansa and Buddha Raki Tat and your comments. Um, so, so the I, uh, I'm understanding that then this um, sutta is the main point that's coming out is to calm down rather than escalate by arguing. We're escalating and gradually um, becoming more heated and. It leads to fighting, actual physical, you know, fighting, and um, it can escalate to that even, but better to calm down and be here and now 
And um, then I just had a couple of thoughts that um, I that came up for me was uh, there was a I stayed at a a Gurukulam Narayana Gurukulam in Tamil Nadu that was uh, Narayana Narayana Gurukulam N A R A Narayana 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 Yes Yes Samyans Yes Narayana Ishara is another name uh, Gurukulam Narayana Gurukulam Narayana Gurukula. Yes, yes. He's talking nonsense. <laughs> Narayana Gurukula. Gurukula. That is our Asiatic, oh, so. Tamil, uh, Indian English. <laughs> Narayana Gurukula. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you, Swami Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I was there for three months and in Uti, uh, Tamil Nadu, and uh, the, and, uh, the Swami there, I asked him one time, how how it was that Buddhism lost favor in India, and he said that Shankar had, um, I guess he was a Shankara. Shankara, yeah, Adi Shankar. He became he he defeated by uh, debate all the Buddhist the top Buddhist um, people of that time. Um, so that's interesting that. That that's how Buddhism lost its favor, according to the Swami that I, I spoke to, it was through debate. And um, then um, there's a, a teacher that um, f- formulated, uh, invented Aikido, which is a Japanese martial art. And the um, the whole thing is the 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 person who formulated aikido was a um he was a master at other all the other martial arts and he was so masterful that he just devised a way to defeat others by just um taking care of them and not harming them but he was able to avoid any of their attacks or to accept any of their attacks martial arts yes and um, so, by um, being a, such a master, he he was ju- he would just exhaust the other person because they they could not defeat him by their attacks. And so, it's it became an art um, of kind of a peaceful martial art where you're not fighting the other person. So that just I thought of that as a. I sometimes I th- think in in terms of this. Uh, what we're talking about, the Buddha was sort of the ultimate uh, martial artist who went beyond even fighting. He could just, you know, just by being, he was uh, could defeat anybody really. And in uh, like Angulimala uh, tried to kill him, or you know, the elephant tried to attack him and kill him. Uh, the wild elephant in that courtyard, and uh, so just these um, things came to mind as uh, as I was listening. Thank so you. Very interesting point that uh, I'm really really interested nowadays about the uh, the Shankaracharya's teaching, and I got the five verses in Mahabharata. Recently, two people came. One from uh, Tamil Nadu. Other person is. Uh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar Pradesh. And the Bihar Pradesh person can read Sanskrit. And I asked him to read that five stanzas. And given the inter- inter- interpretation of it by the Prabhupada, Maharishi, it is one of the top class uh, Hindu teacher. So it says the non argumenting, non winning, non explainable part is difficult. Don't try. It. The argumenting parts, cosmetic parts, bending the truth is somewhat easy. So therefore, why don't you follow it? So it is being interpreted in thousands of years. Vipassana is difficult. Samatha is easy. Rituals is easy. And not doing rituals is difficult. So therefore, don't do it. So whole India accepted it. It's case uh, Nirguna. 
Nirguna is, you can't explain this, unmanifested form is difficult. Don't try, it is exhausting. So do something, manipulations. Puja and the teacher, representative, humanization, personalization, cosmetics, you can do it. So all India, win. not only that, even whole Sri Lanka took on, taken it. In Sri Lanka, Buddhism means drum beating. Buddhism means cosme, the, the offering flowers, chanting. And this center started in 1967, knowing this is wrong. People told living in the forest is difficult. And meditating is difficult. But this dwelt already 50 years. Now when we are going out, they say you should not come out. You must live in the forest. Why you are coming out? I say, I can come out as I go back to the forest. I am not always out, I am not in. So our internal people also say, Bhante, you are destroying our situation. You are arguing, you are going forward. So I say, it is my, my desire. I am not came, not came to satisfy you people. I am not going to live under the, the constitution. So we are happy. We are happy to share it with the corona people, non-corona people, argumenting people, interfaith people. I am giving. So therefore this Arjuna and the um, Vishnu argumenting, just before Vishnu is killing his whole clan, we are, um, um, Vishnu, sorry, before Arjuna is killing he, all his clan, Vishnu is provoking him to sell. Take the um, bow, you are the only person can take the bow and um, uh, how do you call uh, arming it with the arrow, uh, shoot will you. And he kill all his clan. That's the most eventful thing in the Mahabharata. The he says, not killing and not doing something is difficult. Do something will you. Believe what I am telling. I am representing God. God is difficult to go and have a it is difficult to give a personal interview with him. But I can give you an interview. Listen. So now I have written form five and a chanted form, his interpretation and some other interpretation. So I am going to take it and talk how the Buddhism was removed from India. Rituals are overwhelming. The sitting meditation, the mindfulness, bear attention. With bear attention, doing nothing, people find difficult. I think we take it as a hobby. We don't take care seriously. We more often we are not mindful. What what problem? What is the problem? We know we are not mindful, but we are not appreciating it. Whenever possible, we come back to the mindfulness. He says, due to my wrong behavior and uh, lifestyle. I am unmindful, please forgive me. I am ready to come back. If I, if you see that I am mindful, please remind me. That is our, our relationship. No other than. So therefore, that your teacher, whoever may be, I wish to meet him. Because he is really touching the pin. How the Sankaracharya completely eradicated, misled the India. And exactly the same thing now happening in Sri Lanka. For thousands of years, not now. So we are to really develop our human nature, talk each other and express it in an open air. Nothing to hide. Uh, he was very uh, it's open uh, impressive person. Open um, fellow. That's why he can talk it like that. He, Otherwise, he, usually talk like Don't like that. They are, they are um, camouflaging. Yes. Hmm. So keep it in your mind. Yes, so we have an appointment, not to have a disappointment, okay, so but to meet with him. So we are going to do anything to tell. So that's the end of the discussion. We have already spent one hour very quickly. So thank you very much for the participation.